Uh, my name is Al Gillis. I'm a 17, 18-year resident of Easton, Massachusetts, and I guess I'm the host family to the 2019 Lufsgaden uh, Pancreatic Cancer Research Walk here in Easton. We've kind of branded it for my wife, who I lost two years ago to this horrid disease. Uh, so it's, we're calling it Brenda's Walk for a Cure. She was well known around town and was certainly my better half. I like to say Lufsgaden is the best organization that I wish I had never heard of because of the work they're doing to combat this dreaded disease. All of the money you give to Lufsgaden goes directly to pancreatic cancer research and they're funding some pretty dramatic and important work at some of the leading cancer research institutions in the country, including your Dana-Fibers, your Arthur Andersons, your uh, Hopkins, all of the big ones. And they're, they're making some, some, some pretty good headway as far as identifying pancreatic cancer early and having some good things to fight it with. So I'm glad to be associated with it. It's our second year doing it. And uh, hopefully we don't have to do it too many more years before there is a cure to this horrible disease that takes people from their family way too, way too quickly and way too early. Sean here is one of the lucky ones who actually made it through the other side. And I think he probably, looking at the size of him, just scared the thing off. But let me let John talk to you for a few minutes. <laughs> this is my second year walking, in East, walking here in Easton. Uh, I met Al, who I now call a friend. Yeah, you are. I appreciate and, it. And uh, I got pancreatic cancer seven years ago. It was found by accident. They, I had a lump under my arm. They did a CT scan and they found cancer in my pancreas. Um, I was fortunate that the cancer that I had was called neuroendocrine tumor on your pancreas, which is far less aggressive than um, the other cancer of pancreatic cancer, which is adenocarcinoma, which was very uh, aggressive. And I did my first walk uh, five or six weeks after my surgery. And I do two or, two or three walks every year. And I also run uh, an event called Purple Pucks for Pancreatic Cancer Research, which is also a lust gotten event that I run every November. And uh, I'm just lucky to be here. I'm glad you are here, John. You're a good man. I tried. Um, my name is Cindy Callahan, and I'm from Immunovia. Uh, Immunovia is a Sweden-based company. Uh, we have an office in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Uh, we've developed a biomarker signature for the early detection of pancreatic cancer. Uh, in retrospective studies, the uh, accuracy of the test was 96% in stages 1 and 2, and 98% in stages 3 and 4. We proudly support the Lust Garden Foundation as all the research um, dollars come from um, events like this one, uh, and it goes 100% towards research, so we certainly like that. And we also want to spread the word about early detection and uh, signs and symptoms for pancreatic cancer. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be at this race today. It's incredible seeing so many people out here so many, so early in the morning all wearing purple and excited about pancreatic cancer research. Pancreatic cancer is a, it's a really tough cancer. Uh, 50,000 people in America get pancreatic cancer a year and it recently became the third leading cause of death in the United States. So it's a real, real tough adversary, but I'm happy to report that we're starting to make progress on it. Every year, all the oncologists uh, gather in Chicago in June, about 50,000 oncologists, to talk about the latest breakthroughs in pancreatic cancer research. Last June, we learned that using a certain chemotherapy regimen after surgery called Ophirinox improved survival by 19 months, which was an extraordinary step forward. This year, though, we're even more excited about this upcoming oncology conference called ASCO because for the first time since I've been an oncologist, pancreatic cancer has been selected to be in the plenary session. So the plenary session, they pick the four best research breakthroughs. And this year, we're going to hear how a pill called a PARP inhibitor improves pancreatic cancer treatments um, in patients who have a certain mutation called BRCA1 and BRCA2. As a field, we're incredibly excited about this. However, 
we still have a long way to go because this breakthrough is going to help us. It's only going to help about 5% of pancreatic cancer patients. And that's why it's so important for organizations like the Lust Garden to support us. And the Lust Garden has just done an incredible job. They really are pushing us, the researchers and the doctors, to try to get better treatments. And we're just so grateful to the Lust Garden. So I really just want to say thank you to the Lust Garden and thank you to all the people who came out today to support this really important cause. Thank you. At this time, we kick off our opening ceremony by asking those who are sitting, if you are able to please stand. Do would everybody please remove your hats as we honor a member of the senior of our national anthem. And please welcome your national anthem singer, a fifth grader from the Hinson School, King, Ms. Rose Isis. Um, the details we know at this point is that there's a pill 
called a PARP inhibitor uh, that works in about 5% of pancreatic cancers. And this is something, it's been like a holy grail of pancreatic cancer research that we've been waiting for for a long time. So it's great to see that progress is being made. But what I can tell you is that we still have a long way to go and that thanks to the Lust Garden Foundation, we're making more and more progress towards that goal. So thank you all of you for coming out and I just want to wish all the runners and all the walkers good luck today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Well, everybody has a great and personal story to tell while you're here, and when we've had time to hear everyone's story, I think you'll agree with me that there's one group of people whose story we would like to honor at this time. So any survivors of pancreatic cancer, would you come up to the stage, please, at this time? We would like all survive any survivors? Any others? Please welcome John Sawyer. We're going to, uh, we're going to come into the start of the day. John to lead the way. So John can get to the start of the day. We're going to have a special ribbon cutting kind of ceremony for John to get us started. And we'll get started in about four or five minutes. Hold on, hold on. Hi, I'm John Sawyer. I'm a seven-year survivor of pancreatic cancer. I, I do three of these walks every year, two or three of them every year, and I run a thing called uh, Purple Pucks for Pancreatic Cancer Research. We uh, run a hockey game every November, and believe it or not, I actually play hockey, and we actually have Purple Pucks. Um, I stand at these events and look over the sea of purple and realize that everybody here is here because mostly they had somebody in their family or a friend that passed away. I have survived this guilt. I'm still here. I was lucky. I had a rare kind. It was accidentally found early. But you folks are the people who are going to get this fixed. Thank you. Start on, 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 That was Cassandra Olson of Norton.
Scott Morrison, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. about it for Mindy Finkelstein and Randolph. Jim Spellman, Bridgewater. John Snowgrove who finished a few moments ago. There's Megan Cuddy from the Garrison City of Dover, New Hampshire. How about Allie Bishop and Michael Berry? I can't get all the names in this group, but I can tell you there's a bunch of Ferreras in this group. Riley, Rick, Reagan, and Nicole. Bobman and Weaven is ready to finish is Ryan Fleming from Norton. How about Katarina Hoffman Easton? Irene Gibbons, so.